Many people enjoy maple syrup on their pancakes, French toast, waffles, but do you know how it's made? The real deal is not made in a factory. Well, right now we are in the midst of the maple syrup season. Who knew? So our Michelle Oliver went out to the E.L. Johnson Nature Center in Bloomfield Hills to find out how to make this sweet treat. make maple syrup and it all comes out of trees just like this one. That's right. We have about 200 sugar maples. We're lucky to have that many right here in this one location. So how does this work? I've never made maple syrup before. It's about as simple a process as you can imagine. We need to take a little bit of sap out of that tree and then boil it until it's ready. All right, so you brought some tools here to help us. What do we, what do we need to do? Real basic tools. We have a brace and bit, which is just essentially a, a basic drill. So we're gonna drill that hole about right here at a slight angle up so that the sap okay. will flow downward. That's so right, like that. about right there. And one hand on the handle and then crank. That's about far enough right there. And then we're going to pound a hollow tube called a spile into that hole. So All right, tap then... that in. Oh, look at it drip. Oh, it's dripping, yay! Take the bucket and slide bucket. it over. It's got a little knob on top there that'll hold it. Then we have a lid, and the lid keeps rain, snow, bugs, birds out, and the sap will drip into that bucket until we come and gather it. It can take anywhere from six hours to a couple of days for the bucket to fill, depending on the weather. Then they gather it up and put it in this big holding tank next to the very steamy sugar shack. It smells amazing in here. Well, this pan was a great invention. It actually has a patent dating back to the 1890s. The recipe is simple. Boil the sap until it becomes syrup. But it takes a long time. For every 40 buckets of sap, only one bucket of syrup is produced. We have a hose right here that connects to the tank. The sap runs through that hose constantly into this pan. There's a float box over there that controls the level of the sap. And then each of these chambers in the pan is, are connected to each other. So as we move through the chambers, it gets more and more concentrated. Yes. I've noticed it's kind of lighter over here and it keeps getting darker as you go down. Exactly, it's, it's more dense as it boils. They have openings, except the very last one. I have it plugged off from everything else so that that's actually where the syrup is made. All right, I'm testing the maple syrup to see if it's ready. And the test is, how does it drip from my scoop? And if it drips more, uh, more slowly than water, that's a good sign it is ready. So what I'm gonna do is open up this spout right here, and the hot syrup will drain through two filters into my bucket below. After it cools, we get to do my favorite part, taste it. Corn syrups have artificial thickeners added to it and other chemicals. And real maple syrup, of course, doesn't have that. So when you taste it, people are surprised at how watery it appears. But the flavor is the thing you're after, and it's great. I'm going to try it out. <laughs> oh my gosh. Very strong. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's so yeah. strong. That's so good. We collect a, probably close to 1,000 gallons of sap. And last year, we made about 25 gallons of syrup. And we're not into it for quantity. We're here to demonstrate for students and the public how this is done. OK, well, the people at E.L. Johnson Nature Center in Bloomfield Field Hills were nice enough to bring us some maple syrup to try it out. So we are doing maple yeah. syrup shots. Hey, Jody. Nice. Hey, Mona. How are Hi. you? Hi. Thank you for being here. Salute. Cheers. Syrup shots. There you go. Right down the hatch. Mmm. Mm. That's maple-y. That oh, is wow. maple-y. Mm. <laughs> it's good. Mm. It is delicious. Mm. Somebody put so butter shots in a mine. A darkness I I to it, like when you, if you butter? saute butter and sugar and it's got that kind and of caramelization. Yes. yes, that's what it tastes exactly. like. Exactly. There's a lot of depth mm. there. It's mm. nice. Mm. Have you ever had a butter shot? It's butterscotch, a schnapps, and Crown Royal. Dude, I thought you meant like butter. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Jesus, I was like, that's, that's a butter. thing? Like, Straight where am I? I'm living under a rock. I didn't know what was going on. I felt the feeling. I was like, 
butter <laughs> shots. So not a butter <laughs> shots, shot. Pancake but, shots. It's yeah, breakfast. There, yeah. right. Well, the reason they tap the trees this time of year is because of the weather cycle of freezing and thawing going from cold at night to warm during the day, which causes the sap to flow best. All right. If you would like to go to the E.L. Johnson Nature Center and see the process for yourself, they are having an event called Tapping the Sugar Bush on Saturday, March 18th. One hour tours begin at 11 a.m. and start every 20 minutes through 2 p.m. We'll post the information for the event on our Live of the D webpage at clickondetroit.com. That's right. We have to keep it all straight. We actually have <laughs> a Live in the D page on ClickOn. Click not, not, nothing to do with Facebook or Twitter or anything. We have that too. <laughs> but we have a dedicated Live in the D page on clickondetroit.com. So Got it. that's where that is.